Hey everyone, welcome to Table, Table Hops, Hops, the channel where we pair board games with beer. Today we're playing Fate of the Elder Gods by Fabled Nexus. And pairing it with The Death of Cthulhu by Adroit Brewing. Let's, Let's get, get table hot! I will now begin the summoning ritual. The terrifyingly named beer, The Death of Cthulhu, was created by Adroit Brewing. It is a Russian Imperial Stout, and it has Cthulhu's face on it, our lord and master. We will now pour the Icarus fluid into this glass. I wish I had an HP Lovecraft glass. I have a Poe glass. That'll have to do. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Pure darkness. Now to taste it. Oh, it smells very nice. I like it. Oh, that is... Oh, that... That is so good. Thank you, Cthulhu, for spilling your fluids into my glass. No, Chris. I won't join your creepy cult. Steven, it's not the same as last time. Now we have been blessed by Cthulhu himself. He has his Icarus fluids flowing into this... Vessel. You must partake and then you will see. Let me help you. Drink. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, what do you think? I think I'm ready. You are ready to join? Oh, no, you're not! This is your first task, is to learn how to wear the cloak. You are a true acolyte now. Bump it, brother. So, we just had the Death of Cthulhu by Adroit Brewing. It's a dark Russian stout, 12% alcohol by volume. It is a destroyer of worlds. Is that what it says? No, I just said that. I thought that was cool sounding. That does sound like an Adroit beer, though, doesn't it? It does. It does. So, uh, it is exactly what it says it is. It's a heavy... Imperial Dark Stout. It's It has a, a lot of tasty business going on. Everything I like about a stout is in this beer. I know you're not the biggest stout fan, but I'm interested to think, oh, what did you think about the, the beer? It's pretty good. Yeah. It, um, it definitely doesn't have the super chocolatey hint that most stouts have. Well, it's a Russian stout, yeah. right? So that generally has what, uh, almost more like roasted coffee kind of business going on usually. Kind of, and, I don't get that so much. Um, I get more of a like, <clears throat> like a clean coffee, like a vanilla oak kind of business going yeah. on. Actually, I would probably call it more of that. Um, yeah, the stouts, the Russian, the only other Russian stout I've had is the Rasputin Imperial Rasputin, mm -hmm. but I think this is even better than that. This has more of the uh, the, the interesting character profile of the the. I don't think this is barrel age, but it tastes like it was. Yeah. Um, if you're into stouts, I would definitely try and pick up this bottle. Um, it comes in an amazing box, and uh, out of five, I would give it a, a 4.75, because I'm a, a big stout fan, and this is a big stout. I'd give it a four out of five. Good! Hey, look! Fate of the Elder Gods is set in the Cthulhu mythos, but unlike many games set in this universe, you play as the cultists trying to summon your Elder God. There are different locations around the board where you may place your cultists but doing so may attract investigators. 
Investigators attempt to seal away her god with elder signs. On your turn, you will be moving the fate piece, which allows you to use that location's actions. It also limits movement choices for the next player, allowing you to summon your god first and claim victory. If you have the most cultists at a location, you have control of that location, which gives you access to bonus abilities. Some locations give you spell cards, which are used for movement as well as different in-game effects. Certain locations allow you to discover ancient artifacts. Some artifacts can be used multiple times, whereas some are sacrificed for a one-time powerful effect. Each Elder God also has a unique ability that can turn the tides in your favor. If your summoning tracker moves full circle, you have summoned your god and have won the game. If, however, investigators have filled your summoning track with Elder Sign tokens, they have thwarted your efforts and you lose. Throughout your journey, you will sometimes become cursed. If this happens, the player to your left takes a card and keeps it hidden until the secret criteria has been met. Good luck, cultists, in unleashing the Elder Gods into our world. We just played Fate of the Elder Gods by Fabled Nexus. What did you think, Chris? I liked it a lot. I haven't heard of this developer before, um, but I'm a big Cthulhu fan, and it was the only game that I could find where you play as the cultists. Yeah, Instead the of the investigators that are trying to stop Cthulhu, you're trying to summon them, and that's neat. Yeah. Instead of playing as Monterey Jack, you get to play as Chris the Cultist. That's me. Yeah, they made figures of me. Um, the other thing I like is the, the design of the board is really cool. Um, I like the artwork of all the different Elder Gods. I like the dice with all the different um, pieces or uh, faces on it. That's really neat. My favorite aspect of the game is how interactive it is with the other players. For instance, when you take a turn, you're moving the fate piece to another spot. And that prevents someone else from moving to that same spot that turn. Um, the other thing that I really enjoy are these curse cards. Because they're kept a secret by the player to your right until you do something that triggers its effect. So while you're playing, you're like, uh-oh, am, am I going to trigger a curse right now? I mean, that, it's a uh, white knuckle gaming. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I really like the curse cards. I think the one thing I don't like about the curse cards is it feels like it's a lot of the same stuff. It's either do this action or have this many people on a space. Right. Um, right. They're they're not they're not overly different. The, I think the artifacts are all completely different. Though. Yeah, the artifacts are all different. Those are neat. Um, the the movement me or the action selection mechanic is interesting, um, where you have to discard something from your hand to be able right. to use it. Um, and I like how those are used to cast different effects later in the game. So you have to balance whether you're going to save a card to use its spell effect or spend the card to be able to move to a certain location. Yep. Yep. Um, I think it's great. I I honestly don't know why more people haven't played this. Um, yeah, I, I I just don't think it has the... What is it? The exposure that it deserved. Sure, right? I agree. Um, I, agree. I, I think it's a really well-balanced game, and the more I'm thinking about it, the reason the curses may not be all different is... If you have like one especially deadly curse in here, it's not really fair if you draw that one. I mean, that's part of a curse. I mean, it's not. Yeah. But I mean, I think they maybe they do that for balance purposes, or maybe they just got lazy and didn't want to make up any new curses. Cool. So I would, um, I'd give this game a seven out of ten. Okay. Um, solid game. Enjoy playing it. Um, I really like the the mentors are great. Um, you know all the components are really great quality the cardboard's really thick actually for all the tokens and right stuff. right and i like how the the board um i'm going to just destroy it right now uh on the other side of the board there's still artwork how cool is that looks like a 1979 dungeon master screen i would give it an eight out of ten okay uh the reason is it it has all the aspects of a game that i like the artwork's cool it's competitive and everything you do is interactive with what the other player's actions are. Thanks as always for watching. Links to our untapped and board game geek profiles are below. Be sure to check out our other YouTube videos as well as our bi-weekly podcast. And remember, good beer, good games, great, great times! times!